Hey, welcome back to another deck strategy guide. This week I'll be looking at a red-yellow soul eel deck. This idea has been tossed around for a long time, but I'm stealing the name from a player named Amoeba, and I have sort of made my own modifications to his list. It's a little bit more complex than most of my other guides, so be prepared for a learning curve if you are a newer player. Uh, how I've built this one is a control style of deck, so it excels at keeping the board clear and, and taking control of all of the Faria Wells. We've got uh, a lot of removal options like Rakoa Copter, uh, Spirit Theft, even Barter sometimes is a form of removal. And then, of course, just like the name states, uh, we've got some Soul Drains for removal. Also soul packs just to give us some more feria for all of these removal options. And then thunder eel of course as well. And this is a great card because it gives you both removal and a creature all in one card. So it does have this extra effect of dealing four damage if that creature is on an ocean space. So you can take a massive swing with this on aquatic or flying creatures, as long as they don't have a land underneath them. But this effect is just kind of a nice bonus to have, because uh, just this 2 damage right here is still really great, and paired with all of your other damage removal in the deck, you can get some really efficient clears on things. This is also the highest land requirement in the deck, and I keep myself down to 4 lands, so that I can get access to the plus one and draw options on the power wheel as soon as I can. We've also got Airbot, which is an excellent little collector because it can just dash to the other side of the wells and get into double collection really quickly uh, without even needing to build lands up towards them. And this is such a low feria investment for you that you don't really mind so much if it gets removed. Soul Drain or Cypher's Wrath trades evenly with it and anything else, any other kind of removal, is just a, simply a loss for your opponent. And also being that it can get into double collection so quickly means that it's actually a really big threat for your opponent if they don't deal with it early on. Collection is really important for this deck. You need as much fairy as you can to remove your opponent's creatures. Your hand potentially also empties quite quickly because you have a lot of cheap and efficient things. So we need some extra deck weight to give us more cards to play. And that's kind of where Spirit Theft uh, and even Barter sometimes can give us some extra things to play. Spirit Theft, I only run as a two of since the land cost is a little bit pricey. You can't use it early on in the match. But this lets you steal a creature from your opponent that has one life remaining. But uh, getting things down to one life is actually really easy with all of these two damage cards you have in the deck. Just uh, when you're looking to steal a creature though, remember that the creature you steal will have its land cost converted into wild costs. So if you're using this on a creature with greater than four land requirements, you'll have to build extra land in order to play that card. And uh, the, the same rule applies to Barter, of course, as well. I also put Ariana in here for some extra deck weight. A lot of uh, more experienced players don't like this card so much because it can be easily punished with cheap removal while it costs you four every time you play it. But when facing a control deck, it can be difficult to make a creature actually stick to the board. And if you're able to remove a lot of things and stop your opponent from collecting so much, they won't be able to spare the extra fairy to deal with Ariana coming down so often. They may get a few efficient clears in there, but eventually they'll run out of steam, and they'll probably end up plus oneing rather than drawing from the power wheel so much if you're managing to clear the board anyways. But having said all this, I'd usually prioritize playing your other creatures in here first, if you have any in hand. It's always better to invest a sturdier body, like Windborn Emissary or something, rather than the Ariana, if you have that option. But Ariana does give you some excellent weight to your hand, if you're not drawing into any other creatures. The win condition for this deck is a little less clear than other decks. 
There's no Colossus or anything, but we do have Mistral Guide here, and this is a very exciting card. It gives uh, dash to and flying to any creature you summon adjacent to it, and so it can be used to dash your creatures all across the map, either into collection positions or straight to the opponent's face, without the need to build any other extra lands to get there. And it also synergizes really well with a lot of cards in here, because uh, any other dash effects or gift effects that you have on other creatures will still apply. And it's important to note that uh, Mistral Guide's dash ability triggers first in all of these cases, before any other abilities. So if you summon like uh, Airbot next to it, for example, you get to use you get to dash it twice actually, which lets you put the Airbot almost anywhere you like on the board. And of course, you can do this with Rakoa Copter as well. Mistral Guide's dash will happen first. So first you get to dash two, and then Copter lets you dash one afterwards. And this is a really strong uh, mechanic for Rakoa Copter, because uh, one of its weaknesses is that normally it can only dash once, of course. So in other decks that don't run Mistral Guide, you tend to need to build a brand new mountain just to position this in the right spot. And you could be positioning that mountain in a very awkward spot for yourself. Um, and even then, it only has so much reach. So Guide gives it that uh, extra really nice reach. Another cool interaction is with Axe Grinder. Like I said, the dash happens before anything else, including the gift effect that Axe Grinder has. And the other thing to keep in mind about dash is that the creature will count as being summoned on whatever tile it lands on after the dash, if that makes sense. Um, this is pretty obvious when you look at Rakoa Copter, not so obvious when you look at Axe Grinder, but what all of this means is that you can play Axe Grinder adjacent to Mistral Guide, dash it somewhere, and if where it lands after the dash is an opponent's well, it'll get this uh, plus one plus one buff on it. So in the mulligan, you're going to look for at least one starting creature, and there are 10 in this list. We've got uh, Axe Grinders, Emissaries, Ariana, and Airbot. Other cards you want to look out for if you've got one of these already in your starting hand is potentially a second starting creature, um, some lower land removal, so you definitely want to toss the Spirit Theft away if you get it. But something like Soul Drain is really nice to keep alongside a creature. Uh, Mistral Guide also is really excellent in your starting hand. If I only have uh, Airbot in my starting hand, I always mulligan away both of the other cards in hopes of getting at least one more creature. This Airbot is quite the fragile body. It is a really good collector, but I'd like another creature to back it up just in case this gets removed. And one last consideration you could potentially make is keeping this Mistral Guide even if you don't have any other creatures, and then just mulliganing away the other two in hopes of getting one. I don't really like doing this so much because I feel it's much better to have a turn two creature rather than one that comes down on turn three. And if you do keep the Mistral Guide, uh, I actually did the math on this to see how likely it is to mulligan for a starting creature with it. If you don't like math, skip through this part. Uh, that's completely fine. But in Faria's mulligan system, if you toss away a card, you won't see any more copies of that card when you redraw the ones that you tossed away. So with this in mind, in the best case scenario you could possibly have, so let's say your starting hand is uh, Mistral Guide, uh, Thunder Eel and Soul Drain. We're gonna be tossing away the Thunder Eel and the Soul Drain in this case. So when we do that, the uh, probability for finding a starting creature, one of those 10 starting creatures, uh, by tossing those two away is gonna be 69.2%, and that's just the best case scenario. So if you have uh, like two copies of a card, like two Thunder Eels in your hand, or Spirit Theft, because this is only a two of, 
If you toss those away, the probability is just going to drop even lower than that. And if we compare this to tossing away all three cards instead, again, in the best case scenario, our probability to finding a starting creature goes up to 87.6. Uh, and that's a lot of statistical numbers, uh, very nerdy, but I mean, if you look at those raw numbers, you can see that it's a pretty huge increase to tossing away three as opposed to two, and so that's one of the reasons I don't like keeping the Mistral Guide. Definitely a consideration to make for that. If you don't trust my math on this, I've also just created a spreadsheet where you can enter your own data in, and you should be able to see the formulas in that, I think, so I'm going to link that spreadsheet down below. Uh, you can use it for uh, any other calculations you want as well. Alright, so let's talk about the alternative cards now. First one I want to talk about is Last Nightmare. So if you're looking for other includes in this deck, this is where I'm going to cover those. And Last Nightmare is actually one that Amoeba had in his original list. I don't like it so much because of the three desert costs. Also, in the current meta, I find Nightmare quite lacking. Um, it's just destroy a creature, but the cost for it is so expensive. And uh, with all of this little damage removal in here, it's pretty reasonable to try and make clears without using Nightmare. Wind Soldier is another one you can use, and this is really interesting paired with Mistral Guide, because you can potentially get a lot of collections off of this. So if you drop this adjacent to guide, you get to dash it twice, potentially on a well, but then you still get to charge it, and it's got flying, so it can go pretty much anywhere on the board. And um, this is a fun little combo, but uh, not so strong without the Mistral Guide, considering I only want to be building four lands with this deck. Um, without the Mistral Guide, you're going to have to build a lot of double neutrals, so that's one of the reasons I don't run that in here. Shaden Demon is just a solid card you could include as well. 5-4 uh, for 3 cost is just excellent, and again with Mistral Guide you can dash these towards the opponent's face and get some really aggressive lines off there. Uh, another one is Aura Germ Fanatic. This is an interesting card. Um, also paired with Mistral Guide because you know you can do all these movement tricks all around the board with it. But uh, Origin Fanatic's always nice. Uh, you don't really want to run Flashwind again because of the three deserts, but if you're looking for some extra mobility, then Origin Fanatic is perfect. Iona also is another card I was uh, looking at. Kind of does a similar job to Airbot in that you just send it off uh, with the idea that you don't want it to be harmed, uh, you just want it as a collector. So this is the same sort of idea, but I kind of valued the dash 2 a little more here. Also, this is weak to Ground Shaker, but um, that dash 2 can be very strong when you're looking to set up collections. Uh, another thing you can consider in this list is actually the Husk package. So I kind of talked about this last, um, last guide, but um, Haunted Husk fits the land requirements quite nicely with that two desert and one wild requirement. And especially with the control style aspect, you can really um, starve your opponent of Faria, and then it's really difficult for them to play cards. So getting to this four land, or sorry, four card requirement is pretty easy. And then of course you could also include the other elements of that package being a my merchant, which is um, it works really well in this, especially as a starting creature. This is pretty nice because, uh, as I'll talk about in the land placement section, um, building your deserts uh, sort of towards the wells is really strong with Emissaries and Gagana. So this makes it a very excellent starting creature paired with these creatures as well. Um, those are the important ones for this list, I would say. You could consider running a Storyteller, because this is sort of part of that husk package as well. But um, it, I, I feel that there's a lot of control in this list, so you don't necessarily need this. Uh, in the last tournament I participated in, I actually played this list with husks. So uh, maybe I'll link that dis uh, deck 
down in the description below if you want to check that out. Or maybe I'll just show that in the video later on. Um, another card, while well, we're in neutrals, is uh, Sandstone Explorer. Uh, this one was also in Amoeba's original list, and a lot of red-yellow flyer type of lists uh, this is seen in there. Uh, just the explorers are excellent. Four cost neutral card that uh, gain really nice stats when you build these lands up. Um, it is a land creature, like it requires uh, land to move on, unless you've got that Mitchell guide. So another reason I don't like this as much is because I really with this list I don't ever want to build neutrals if I can help it. I really want to stick to that four land requirement, and it's very likely to do so because of all of these flyers uh, and that mistral guide as well. Daring Adventure is another one that's interesting since you can pair this up with mistral guide as well to get this into interesting positions where you can get a lot of buffs on this. Uh, the only thing I'm not particularly fond of with this one is like if you're sending this in between multiple creatures, Rakoacopter is kind of the card you want to play in that situation instead. One thing to look out for for this card though is that it does only cost four compared to the five for Copter, so you could experiment around with this card, but uh, it's not as good as that Copter. So then some cards in red you could take a look at. Cypher's Wrath is a kind of card, but you're not going down the burn route, so Soul Drain's a lot better. You also want to be building towards your deserts first, so it kind of makes red cards a little bit weaker uh, since you're building those deserts first. But uh, Flame Burst is an alright card. It's along the similar lines of Wind Soldier. So, um, like I said, Wind Soldier is really fantastic with Mistral Guide, but if you're not willing to take that risk, you could consider putting Flame Bursts in instead. And, oh, I forgot one more, of course. How could I forget Spite Sprite? This is a really cool card in this list, just because of the efficient fairy cost with it, like a 3 1 for 1 fairy. And because of Mistral Guide, you can just uh, send this right aggressive into face or into creatures, and um, uh, as long as this doesn't get removed, you're kind of dealing 3 damage for 1 fairy, which is pretty excellent to have. And that's pretty much all I'd really recommend from Red. Uh, oh, there's one more... Um, one more card you consider is Garadin, of course. Um, this has been nerfed. It used to be 3 damage, so it's not as powerful. The only reason I took this out is I just feel Rakoacopter is a lot better. Like, it does pretty much the same thing. And paired with Mistral Guide, this Rakoacopter can almost hit anywhere it wants on the board. So Garadin's a little bit lackluster to me, considering I have those options already to me. And it's half the fairy I cost, which is pretty huge. So uh, that's going to be it for all of my alternative cards. Let's actually show you very quickly my eel husk list. This is uh, essentially the same deck, but I have swapped in a few cards for, or swapped out a few cards for Merchants and Husks. And that's uh, the only changes to this list is these two cards. So if you like Husk, you can try this list out, but we're gonna stick with Soul Eel for this video. So land placement can get a little complicated because of the wide variety of creatures you have. I'll try to get through most of the scenarios, but uh, decisions can also change depending on what the matchup is. But here I'd like to, normally I'd like to start center, wherever I can. And then of course the next land will come on one of these two spots here. There aren't any charge or jump creatures in this list, which is the usual advantage to starting center. But these slightly more aggressive la uh, lands are great to give your Mistral Guides some extra range when they shoot off creatures. So here with... Uh, Ariana in hand. It's a pretty easy call. We're going to start with that desert center. Then next turn you're going to desert down one of these sides and play this Ariana. Uh, this of course is the same sort of land placement if you had Animasari. 
uh, and which side you go down very much depends. Emissary and Ariana are both very great at fighting the same side that your opponent goes down, since they have high attack. But uh, collection is also very important though, so my main consideration comes from having a second starting creature in hand. Here I've got two, so I'm looking very healthy. Um, so if I do have two or more, then I feel a lot more confident fighting the same side. And then I can set up another collector on this opposite side the next turn. That's probably more so a rule for Emissary, since even if you get this Ariana to fight stuff, it comes back to your hand. So I think no matter what, I would always put Ariana to fight. But if this had been an Emissary, for example, uh, and I had no other creatures in hand, I may consider going to the opposite side just to preserve that creature and preserve my collections. But of course here I've got plenty of creatures and Ariana, so both of those decisions makes me want to go to this side and drop Ariana here. This deck uh, a lot of the time wants to go to both sides of the wells. It can be a little bit awkward with this start because I did have to invest my desert into the center tile here. So if I get something like a Mistral Guide in the future, I don't want to build a third desert, so probably the Mistral Guide if, if I'm planning on collecting from this side, it's probably going to come down here and just have to take its time to step over into collection. Because we really want our next lands to be mountains. And there are two spots I'm looking at for my first mountain. There's this one here and this one here. This is a weird play, so let's pretend he didn't do that. But uh, I have an option here or here once I've extended my lands because uh, this one right here is actually our new Axe Grinder spot. If we do get a Mistral Guide Axe Grinder combo going in the future, this land is perfect to dash this Axe Grinder up onto this spot and gain that plus one plus one buff. This spot here though is also really good, especially with Mistral Guide, since this land is more aggressive for other things. Axe Grinders still work here, you can dash it over to this side and still get that buff. Although in that scenario, you are going to have a Mistral Guide here, and seeing that you have it already back here to collect off of this well, it's not really necessary to have that Axe Grinder in a double collection spot. I'd much rather it be going uh, aggressive. Uh, this land here is really great for Rakoa Copter and Thunder Eels though. Paired with Mistral Guide, this lets Rakoa Copter reach any tile on the board, actually. So this decision is really easy if you have an Axe Grinder or Copter in hand. So here I've already got that Axe Grinder in hand, so I'm really looking to invest in this Axe Grinder sort of spot, Axe Grinder sort of land. If I had a Copter in hand instead, then I'd probably build this mountain here. Uh, if I had the Thunder Eel in hand, this isn't actually a great spot for Thunder Eel if you don't have the Mistral Guide in your hand already. Uh, this spot here lets the Eel get into double collection sooner. So it becomes a very complicated decision if you don't know what you're going to draw. But uh, easy decision if you've just got Axe Grinder or the uh, Rakoa Copter. You can always, so once you've built this land here, you can always build this land as a mountain, and then you've got a spot where you've got another aggressive line with Mistral Guide and Axe Grinder, but don't rely too heavily on Mistral Guide. It can always get removed, or you never draw it, and then this land that you're dropping here just looks silly. So usually my second mountain will go to the opposite side, so that I have more options for clears on both of these sides of the board. But uh, if you can take advantage of a land spot, that will have an immediate effect. Like if you had that Mistral Guide Axe Grinder already, uh, it might be a good consideration to do that. Um, also, in any future land positions, if you can drop a mountain that gives you a good copter line or something, then by all means build that land wherever it gets you a good clear. Going second is much more preferred with this list, since I can use this explore card uh, to put in the center here, because this land spot is pretty useless to me since none of my creatures have charge or jump, 
So unlike the last scenario where I had to desert awkwardly in the center and give up that land, now I get to build my two deserts to the side, like this. Uh, I'll probably put the other one on this side, and this opens up a spot for next turn I can drop Windborn Emissary here, and even in the future, if I put that desert there, I can put other flyers to the other side, and they're already in a collection position. So it just puts my deserts in relevant places, unlike the last time. Airbot is an interesting start. If you have another starting creature like this Emissary though, you'll want to play this down first. Uh, Airbot's an excellent collector, but you want to get out the sturdier body first, so you guarantee that yourself those early game collections. So in this case I'd start my opening play here with uh, Desert Center, Desert to the side, just like we saw, and uh, getting my Emissary out first, and then building to Airbot afterwards. But let's pretend that I don't have this. Let's pretend I just have this Airbot in my hand right now as my starting creature. So you'll want to get this as far away from your opponent's creatures as possible, preferably into double collection. But uh, how you place your lands here can affect a few things. I'd always start with Mountain Center. That's a guarantee for me since I uh, value my desert spots a little more being here. Only Axe Grinder really benefits from being here to collect, but everything else in the deck uh, can be a desert. My next land, though, will depend on what my opponent does. I can get Airbot into double collection right away if I play a desert to the side here, play it right here, and then I get to dash it too, tuck it right in between the wells just like this. The only issue I have with this play is if my opponent hasn't picked a side yet, and um, he didn't decide to race down the center like this, so let's say he just built a special land in the center tile or something, he hasn't invested down any side yet, um, I'm a little scared to put my airbot here, just because they have the option to now chase this down, and if you don't drop another creature here to back this up really soon, They'll just be able to contest both sides of these wells, clear your airbot, and uh, then they can also even contest this land spot that you've just built. So I'd only play this here if my opponent invests right away down this left side here. Otherwise, I'd instead use the center tile here to dash my airbot over to this spot. And this spot lets me retreat the airbot if they try and chase it down. And also I don't lose this land investment right away. I've invested in this side, so they'd come this way, then I've still got um, all of my lands able to come up this way. And if they decide not to bother it while it's here, then it has the option to step up into double collection, and it's got free reign for that. If Axe Grinder is the only starting creature you have in hand, of course I do have an Emissary here, so normally I would prefer playing this by doing that Emissary start with Desert Desert and playing that down, but uh, let's pretend like we don't have any other creatures in hand. If all I had was this Axe Grinder, then I'm actually going to start with my Mountain to the side like this, so I can play this Axe Grinder immediately. Uh, this does mess with your lands a little bit, but that early collection is really important. Especially if you have no other creatures in hand, you probably not going to be collecting for a little while until you draw another creature, so it's really important to get this down as soon as possible, just like this. Of course, if you have the explore, you can still do explore center, and then mountain here, next grinder here. The last scenario is if you have double emissary going first. So here I'm going second, but let's just ignore this and pretend like I'm going first. So I'm going to purposefully mess with my lands in this situation again, because this is going to let me set up a double collector on turn two, and that's just something I can't pass up. Uh, so to get uh, both of these into double collection, or double collection with both of these, I'm going to start with my desert to the side this time, and then on the following turn I can desert to this opposite side and drop both of these. And that lets me get double collection on uh, turn two, or at least set up. I'm not double collecting yet, but it gets it set up. So of course this only works with double emissary, you can't do this with Ariana and emissary or something, it costs one too much. 
but uh, this is a very strong opener with the double emissary. Okay, so now that all of that complexity is out of the way, let's get into a sample match. Alright, so we're gonna get rid of this. I'm fine with the soul drain. <clears throat> Sesh likes to play blue, so those Rokoa Copters are pretty good against Battle Toads if he's playing those. Uh, so we'll start with our Desert Center here. Next turn we've got access to both of these, which is nice, but unlikely he'll play anything. Oh, look at that. So I'm actually going to play both of these here. I can ship this off to the left side while this collects. Didn't use the explorer. Alright. Oh my. <laughs> Double profit, so that's why he didn't explore. Uh. Oh. Okay, well, the soul drain has to come down on this prophet, I'm thinking, because I don't want him to collect off of my wells. He gets a large advantage from that. So we're going to be soul draining, soul packed. Can we mistral guide as well? I think so. We'll be at four. Yeah, so we'll mistral guide as well. This could potentially get hit by a ninja toad. So maybe I shouldn't have stepped up here. Probably down here was better. But uh, let's clean this up. Uh, I'm thinking of stepping in range and putting Mistral Guide to back it up. He might have land mobility, which would kind of suck, but uh, any way we could prevent that. Not so much. So let's build this mountain off to this side. So this line gets punished pretty hard by a couple things. But uh, I'm going to bank on the fact that he's not going to have both Ninja Toad and like a Sunken Tower. He's only got three cards, so that's pretty unlikely. Um, if he does have Tower, that hurts a little bit, but I get to keep my Collector alive. So... And then he also gives up this collection, so I'm not super afraid of that. Airbot, so I'm going to have to draw here because I don't have anything. Double airbot. Could potentially block my Mistral Guide with the airbots. Maybe even put double airbot here and block his collection entirely. That's kind of cool. Again, I'm still afraid of Ninja Toad. He didn't have it, but he could draw into it soon, so I may need to watch out for that. I think this collection will definitely happen. So I could just step down, double airbot. That doesn't get punished by a lot of things, just Emperor's Command maybe. Ninja Toads, so I could send one airbot over here. Um... Okay, we're gonna do it like this actually. I don't care so much. So if this trade happens, that's fine. Uh, I don't want to lose this side entirely, though, if he ninja toads. So I'm going to back that up and then set up a protected collector on this side. And then even if he, like, emperor's commands, I still have that two damage. He might end up playing something there, but we'll see. So I think against blue, I really need to guarantee that I have something set up. 
Um, although I did just give him that Mystic Beast opening. And there's the Battle Toes. Okay. Well, he had a ton of things, so I think I'm fine with that play of just establishing collection over here. So let's draw again. I really need to find some deck right now. Don't have many cards. Um, so one of these is in range of the Airbot, though, so that's like an easy trade for me. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a spot to play this down. That's safe, so I may just have to pass here. I'll take this trade. So he's going to want to hop over here. I could threaten that space by moving. It does open up a lake spot, though. But maybe that's okay. Keep blocking this lake. So he could still Ninja Toad, but I mean, he has to build that lake anyways. And he has to top deck it as well. Alright, both of us playing pretty passively. Um, so still going to draw, no point in building any lands. Uh, Copter is going to be excellent in the future. Yeah, I'm going to pass, I think. Um, now if I collect, that opens up a Ninja Toad line again. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. Play Emissary here, I think. So I don't want to put this Mistral Guide down because it's too easy for him to get a good trade off of this. And then hop over, kill my Mistral Guide. So I'm just going to set up something defensive to contest this beast. I also still have this Mistral Guide in hand, so I can always play both of these in one turn. Tide Lord is very big. So I need to try and draw some more removal. Um, that's nice to see. Hmm. I need that extra mountain to build the copter. Copter's here. Oh, also, extra guy dash two dash one. I don't know if there's a point in playing this. Uh, probably not. Maybe I can mush, push this up. I'm uh, not sure about that. Probably doesn't do much. Um, the reason I built the land here is because uh, I want to force him to build this land. I don't want to build that for him so he can get an easy collection. Could just have a Ninja Toad here. Yeah, I'm wondering, I maybe should have built this Mistral Guide just to have some thing on board. Tower. So I guess he's using this for a collection, double collection. So that's pretty good for him. He gets to establish this land without even building it. And that's not good. So yeah, I think the Mistral Guide coming down would have been good. I could have contested this spot still. Ah, oh, thank you, Barter. <laughs> Lifesaver. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I can play everything, so I'm going to draw for something. Mm, that's nice to see. So let's hope for humbling. I guess this is what I have to take. Definitely. Uh, so we're going to Soul Pact first. So that I get to heal at least one off of this. Humble this. Play the guide. 
and step right back into collection. So if he's got uh, Emperor's Command, I've got another Soul Drain. It's not ideal for me, but shouldn't be too bad. This is going to be a very long and grindy game. Uh, I just have to deal with uh, two more Colossus, and I suppose two more Tide Lords as well. So quite a bit to deal with. I really need to draw into my... Um, Ariana would be nice for some deck white here. Or um, Spirit Theft. Spirit Theft would be pretty great to get on that Colossus. Another barter. May need to save these for humblings. I'm not sure. So we'll just keep on drawing. Okay, Thunder Eel's nice to see. <clears throat> so Thunder Eel, Humbling Vision, and Soul Drain to take this out. Or... Uh, actually, we could be more efficient. Grab an Emperor's Command for this. Thunder Eel, Soul Drain this. Uh, and that saves us one Faria. So I think I like the full clear. So we're going to command this. Um, Eel up here, potentially. He's got this tower that he can send me away with. Um, so maybe this spot's better. He could send me here. No, I like this spot. And this guy... These guys are just going to have to stay here the whole game, it looks like. Uh, they're doing a really good job of land blocking and everything. So that full clear, I think, was important. He's probably going to send this, like, down here. But that's okay. Copter, so let's keep drawing. Axe grinder. That could be ne nice for next turn. I can actually physically build that la uh, land. I think I'm going to step up. We'll see where that takes us. Uh, walk this down. Okay, if I walk this down, he could Lake, Ninja Toad, and Mystic Beast. Uh, so I don't like that. Yeah, so he's gonna send it here. Which I don't think I mind that much. Takes away the slit. Oh, okay, he's gonna take it clear. Okay, I like that a lot then. Unless he's got humbling vision. Uh, Tide Lord. Well, if he's got humbling vision, I've got this copter to clean it up. But I am very fine with that line from him. Because now he's messed up his lands a little bit. Um... Yeah, so we're going to set up this axe grinder up here, try and get some pressure on his face going, and I think I'm going to drop this eel defensively. I'm thinking of eel here, so he didn't have humbling, I feel. I feel like he would have used that. So if he doesn't have humbling, I can damage this. Potentially want to step up. Oops, here. Okay, this could be a risky step up again because of Ninja Toad, but I suppose if he has Ninja Toad, he can find a way to do that, anyways. Yeah, he could just build a lake there and do that, so. Yeah, that's fine. He drew, anyways, so. So 
probably take the... Oh, he's gonna run away. Double copter. So... I mean, there's the potential to put the copter between these, but that doesn't do a whole lot. It doesn't accomplish much. So what I'm gonna do is just double neutral to get this axe grinder going aggressive. Um, I could potentially just ignore all of this. Okay, let's go back to collect. And maybe I just step out of range. Because there's no point to this being here. Up here. Yeah, we'll make our steps like this. So in this spot, I'm still contesting this lake. And I'm still contesting this spot if he decides to hop over. He could double neutral and hop here, and then I don't have much for that, so that could have been a consideration. Maybe stepping here was better. Okay, so the fact that he's retreating, that makes me happy. I think that I will win in the later game, if I can deal with these big things at least. Okay, so... Either I draw or I take this opportunity to use my neutrals and block his lands. Uh, and then I can actually step this into a relevant position. Yeah, I might end up drawing here, actually. I don't want to be building lands. Lands is not winning me the game. So there, we've got some more pressure, that's good. And this guy... I do have an airbot now. So let's do this. Step airbot into this spot. So now the airbot can do the job of blocking this tile instead of the emissary, and I can start marching this towards somewhere relevant. That's really nice. So that's I don't even have to build an extra land, I've got... Oh, well, look at that. Hmm. So this is an interesting decision. I could spirit theft this, or I could just copter, clear. I think I'm safe to draw here, there's nothing that I need, yeah. Soul Pact. This clear is almost definitely happening. Oh, one thing I missed, actually. I could have gotten the full clear here if I had built a mountain. Uh, although I don't know if that was good, because Ninja Toad again punishes that line. So this is going to come in here. I think I need to Spirit Theft because I need that extra deck weight right now. So we're gonna Soul Pact, Spirit Theft 1, Copter the other, Tide Lord here, this one, I don't wanna step in range of this, so I may just stay here. Oh, it's still in range. <laughs> well, okay. I probably should have stepped down then. Honestly, that's probably a fine trade for me. He's got to build that land, and then... Uh, and then he's not collecting also. But, um... Very important that this isn't a lake. He's forced to build this Mystic Beast all the way back here. So... Hmm. Okay, I played this a little wrong. This copter should be here, because I could have done that. Spirit Theft did that one. 
Um, he decides to collect instead. But that was a really easy trade for him, so I think that copter should be on this tile for sure. Oh, he's got frogifies in there too. I didn't see any when I bartered. So we are going to take a poke of 5 damage. Oh. Too bad I don't have that Mistral Guide. <laughs> Get that Rokoacopter right in between here. I could draw for it. I do have the Faria for it. Yeah, so let's draw. Hope to get the Mistral Guide. That would be excellent, but don't find it. That's okay. So let's poke in for five. Suppose drop this Axe Grinder again. Barter doesn't find me anything useful, so we'll just Axe Grinder. Um... I think at this point I don't care so much if this gets hit into this. Uh, let's step this down defensively at least. So he probably takes this trade, but I think that I don't mind that so much. Needs something defensive because I've got this aggression going here. Uh, the Axe Grinder will eventually step up. I want something to defend my face with. But he may be thinking that he's got to put some pressure on my face now. Because I've got him down to 10. He's got some healing in the deck, so... I'll have to watch out for that if this turns into a bit of a race. a command, so he's just gonna double trade. That's pretty good for him. Doesn't leave me... Okay, that's a nice spirit theft. Doesn't leave me a lot of options here, but I'll take a 2-2 frog. That'll be nice for a race. Uh, so let's just keep drawing. Oh, well there's the Mistral Guide. <laughs> One card after. <coughs> So let's just step up. We will spirit theft this. Take that for ourselves. Um, Mistral Guide could come somewhere to fight this. So Mistral Guide and the frog. Yeah. Um, frog back here. And one thing I just realized also is I'm on two cards left of my deck. <clears throat> so I will have to finish this game using all the creatures that I have on board. One thing I'm a little afraid of is that he hasn't played any Ninja Toads yet. So whether he's not running those or if I should expect to see those at some point. But uh, we're going to have to just push everything to face now. Um, probably even playing the copter. Oh, so we can barter for something like humbling. Let's do that. And clear this with humbling copter or humbling eel. Um, collect, copter, eel. Probably the eel. I need something more aggressive, and I'm not going to be drawing anymore, so let's drop an aggressive desert. Play this eel. And I'm going to send the rest of these actually towards face. Uh, probably keep this here still. Still blocking that lake spot. He's played two of his mystic beasts. Alright, looks like he's throwing in the towel. It was a very good match. I, I'm at 20 life, but it was still very close. 
I could have lost board control at any point very easily. Um, so that was very well played. Alright, so thanks for watching. Um, this was a very long video, so thanks for sticking to the end if you managed that. Uh, especially with this last match, very grindy. But um, if you want to see more gameplay with Soul Eel, I'll put a another video in the top left corner if you want to check that out. Right below that, you're going to see uh, more guides. It's going to be the full playlist to all of these deck guides, so also check those out if you want to see more deck guides.